All right, I think you hear me fine. Um, so join the Caraf uh, track and the Caraf session. And uh, again, sorry for this delay. Uh, we had an issue on Open to uh, start the first session. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, quickly um, introduce the, the first session, and we, I will come back on this one later. Uh, and move forward with the initial. So um, just a few words so, uh, who I am. I'm JB, uh, I'm software engineer and fellow at Talent. I'm also an ISF member. And I'm PMC member or committer for roughly 20 Apache projects. Uh, so I'm PMC chair for Apache Caraf, but I'm also working on Carmel, Activity, Q, Felix, and others. Uh, so we did a full, um, uh, full track about Apache Caraf. So basically, we have no more talks, but actually four. Uh, so the first one is a multi purpose runtime. I will show you some coming features and roadmap. Um, it, it's a key moment, I think, for, for Caraf because we give a new, new dimension. Uh, and and uh, it's, I think it's pretty interesting to see uh, where we are coming from. And what's the future for for Caraf? Then we will have another talk for uh, design resilient uh, microservices using uh, CXF and Caraf. Uh, a talk about Java agent, during speaking, and the last uh, talk will be about uh, uh, the use of Caraf at Netflix. And uh, it's actually a, a well balanced uh, track. And uh, the, the the last talk about uh, uh, Caraf at Netflix will. Uh, illustrate what we're going to see in the in this in this first talk. So uh, let me switch to the other talk, the, the one actually uh, scheduled. Uh, so let me share this one. All right. So um, so for, for maybe some some of you doesn't know uh, what is Apache Caraf. It's actually a runtime. So it's not uh, it is not an application server. Uh, it, it's not a container like Docker. It's more a runtime that allows you to deploy any kind of application on it and leverage some existing features uh, existing in Caraf directly in your application uh, as a turnkey. So uh, it's pretty interesting to understand this um, and uh, and the, the the main purpose of of a runtime is really to provide some feature for you. Uh, it's completely a cloud and container ready. So it means that you can run uh, Caraf on Kubernetes, uh, package Caraf as Docker image. We are obviously we provide official images, Docker images, and thanks to this runtime, we can address a bunch of use cases. So it could be backend or frontend applications, uh, it could be IoT messaging and integration, or it could be pure microservices. Uh, so let, let's talk about uh, and compare application server versus microservices. So the application server is what we did 20 years ago. Uh, the pro was a single middleware and infra. It was easy to test and maybe easy to deploy, but the scalability was not really uh, uh, available. And the, the update was difficult because it was a big monolithic thing. So uh, uh, updating a single small component mean uh, updating the whole application server. And um, most of the time, the memory footprint was very high, uh, and actually too high for the use we, we do. On the other hand, so uh, very quickly, we do a microservice. So it's a very high flexible and, and high granularity uh, uh, part or, and component. Uh, we can do roll-up updates, and uh, it's very highly scalable. It's pretty easy. But I think there's some cons and robots. Uh, when you have a bunch of containers, it can cost a lot in terms of infra. But more than the cost of the infra itself is also the management of all those containers. Uh, it's also not easy to test uh, and to have collaborate development because uh, uh, when you want to, to, to test a single uh, microservice, most of the time you need a bunch of all the microservices. And sometimes these microservices are not uh, available for the test. 
And at the end of the day, if you take a look at, about the overall memory footprint, it could be pretty large uh, compared to uh, what, what we can do. Uh, and actually, I think we can imagine, so I think application server and monolith, monolith is, uh, is done, and they, we should not do that, obviously. But my, maybe we have to think about microservices in a more clever way. And that's what I named the monolith. So the monolith is not an application server. But is instead of deploying single atomic microservices, you can group your microservices and consolidate your microservices in a more efficient way. Um, the, the, the grouping is, depends on your application, your infra, a lot of things. I mean, you can start from the microservices approach and, and say, okay, these two microservices are, are actually tied together in terms of uh, exchange, and, and you can still update each, uh, each component. So we don't change the dev model. The development model is the same, but we give the opportunity for the DevOps to optimize the infra. And that's exactly where Caraf is, is going. So the purpose of Caraf is to provide the runtime, allowing you to create some kind of model. So why multipurpose? Uh, so the first thing is in Caraf. So for, for the, the ones who know Caraf, uh, you maybe know that Caraf is based on OIGI, but now you don't know you, you, you don't have to use OIGI to run application in Caraf. The fact that some part of uh, of Caraf is based on OIGI is an internal implementation. It doesn't really matter. So the, the purpose of the new Caraf is to have a unique runtime supporting several prime models. Um, it means that any application module in Caraf will be able to use uh, services provided by all the application module in the same Caraf or remote. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then when you deploy your, I mean, what's your value to have your application in Caraf running? So your application modules. It's basically because you will have some kind of turn key and common feature that you can leverage without cost and without changing your application module in Cara. So for instance, you can directly leverage logging, you can directly leverage monitoring feature like a decanter that can expose a prom Prometheus appender, et cetera. So what you can do in, in, in Cara right now? So the first thing is you can directly create some web application, so basically, manipulate the Caraf HTTP service uh, and register your servlet, your GSP, or whatever. So it means that you can interact with all the application module from this layer, so serv services, CDI, Spring Boot, extra, and support some advanced runtime feature like uh, security, proxy, load balancing, extra. So for this, this is an, uh, an example of uh, a small servlet that I just use at servlet. There is nothing more to do. And if I drop a jar file containing this, uh, this uh, servlet, it will be automatically deployed by, uh, by Kara for me. Non, no, nothing more to, to, to do. Uh, you can also have something more advanced. So in that case, instead of using the add web servlet uh, annotation, when you use directly uh, some declaration in uh, Kara, so for that, we, uh, we, we use the add component that allows you to easily uh, deploy a, a servlet. Another thing is, directly by code, you can get the HTTP service provided by Caraf and register your servlet. So you have different ways of deploying your servlet in, in, in Caraf. And finally, you can still use the WAR approach that you can do in Tomcat, for instance. So you just drop or install your uh, WAR uh, archive in, in Caraf. Some, and this is an example of some feature you can have out of the box for you without uh, doing anything. For instance, in Cara, we have the, uh, the proxy uh, feature that allows you to expose uh, internal or, so by internal, I mean uh, web application module that you deploy in Cara. You can expose using another uh, proxy, so in, in the same Cara, but you can also create a proxy that uh, proxy and remote resource, like uh, for instance, Maven Central there. So it means that in my Caraf instance there, I have slash Maven, but we'll actually proxy to uh, Maven Central. 
similar to what we do with web application, you can do the same with REST API. Uh, so there you can create expose API using a Swagger, Open API, whatever. And you, you, you have exactly the same approach as you can do with web applications. So for instance, you can directly deploy this kind of, so this is an example using a direct ECXF registration. So I have my JAXA authenticated class, and then I just deploy using this piece of code. So I, I just uh, deployed my JAXA server in, in Kera. This is the first approach that uh, a bit of boilerplate. So instead of doing that, you can directly use a, a whiteboard. So in that case, I directly define my JAXA assentation, and so automatically Kara will deploy it. Apache Camel, we have another track at Apache Con about Apache Camel, so I don't uh, put too much there, but uh, just to let you know that in, in Camel, we have uh, the support of Caraf. So it means that your uh, Caraf can run your Camel routes. And so this is another a new uh, feature coming, which is named Caramel. And the purpose of Caramel is directly uh, to allow you to create the kind of Caraf distribution embedding your Camel route. So for instance, you can create, assuming you have a first route uh, created using the Java DSL, a second route uh, using this, uh, I don't know, maybe the Spring XML DSL, and, uh, and a third route uh, as a Java DSL as well, but by package as a Java file containing some processor or, or, or bin. In that case, what you can do is directly do caramel run, and you provide a list of all resources containing your routes, and it will run uh, out of the box. Beyond the hood, it means that we will have a caraf instance running, and this caraf instance running will embed the, the routes located in this artifact. Uh, we can also create a package, so it means that you can group the, the, the three routes definitely in one uh, jar file, it run, you can create a Docker image and you can directly deploy on Kubernetes. So you can do uh, a, a, a running your Cara we and, and embedding your cameras directly on Kubernetes. OSGI, obviously, uh, Cara is internally powered by OSGI. Again, uh, you can use Cara without OSGI, is a big change to what we did in the past. Uh, the, the tagline for Cara was the OSGI container. But that's not not the case anymore. I mean, we we of, obviously you can still use OSGI. So if you know OSGI, you can still deploy your SCR application, your your blueprint application, or whatever. But that's not required. And the, the new focus on on Caraf is to provide a model uh, runtime that uh, support different kind of um, prime model. So here you probably know if you know Cara, but you can do group in SCR extra. The thing is the uh, service registry, the Cara service registry share between all um, uh, modules that you deploy in, in Cara. So it means that from OSGI, you will be able to use uh, bin locating in another prime model like CDI or Spring Boot. And from Spring Boot, you will be able to use uh, being located in, in, in OSGI. So this is an example of an SCR component. So you can see this uh, add component and uh, add reference means that we are looking for a service located in the uh, service registry, and then we just start our component. So CDI uh, is another thing that we support in Caraf. Uh, this is a new uh, uh, CDI support in Arias. Uh, the big advantage is we are able to decouple from the CDI container. So you can use open web bins or well or whatever in, in Caraf. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the difference between pure CDI and Caraf and CDI is the fact that you have some annotation dedicated for OSGI in uh, OSGI CDI. So you can explicitly register and use services uh, from your CDI application. So for instance, uh, this is an example. I have a, a first service uh, there that I, I can use a local bean using at inject. So this is a regular CDI uh, annotation. And then you can see at service is something coming from OSGI CDI that allows you to define this bean as an OSGI service. On the other hand, in another module, 
I have uh, at inject, but this time I'm using at inject with add reference. So it means that this service will be injected uh, from the service registry and corresponding to this one. So it's a kind of wiring that we do between the two, uh, uh, the, the two modules. And finally, a new coming feature is Spring Boot. Uh, so it means that in Caraf, you will be able to deploy Spring Boot uh, module or application. So uh, for now, we support FATJAR. So it means that you have to deploy a, a JAR file containing your Spring Boot. And in the manifest, you have the Spring Boot uh, uh, like a Spring Boot version, uh, classes, Spring Boot lib, extra. Or you can directly deploy a, a folder containing your JAR file. So there is no changing in the Spring Boot module at the development level. So there are no special plugin, there are no special manifest. You just directly use your Spring Boot artifact uh, as you used to do. You just take the, the Spring Boot and you put into uh, into Cara. Override some Spring Boot beans to use some uh, Cara services. So this is done by the, Car the, the Spring Boot service for you. So you don't have to uh, to do anything. I mean, when you, you deploy your Spring Boot uh, application, the Cara Spring Boot module is able to detect some bean, Spring Boot bean, and replace with some implementation specific to the Cara Spring Boot module. I'm thinking about logging, I'm thinking about HTTP service, stuff like that. We also have some implicit bin registration in the service registry, meaning that some of your bin will be exposed in your, the, 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 the service registry. By default, any bin contained in your application will be exposed in the service registry, or you can use some kind of um, metadata definition to see if this is the bin that I want to push in the service registry or not. So this is an example um, of a Spring Boot package. So this is a, a, an example of using Spring Boot uh, deployed on an existing and running Caraf instance. And this is an example of Spring Boot package with, with Caraf. So let's start with the first approach. Is, so let, imagine you have a, a, a Caraf running and you want to deploy a new Spring Boot module in there. So you have new commands dedicated, Spring Boot install, and you just provide the location of uh, your Spring Boot jar file. So it could be a jar file, local. It could be a local folder. It could be an HTTP or a Maven uh, location. Then when you deploy, there are some uh, extraction from the, uh, details like the main class, the start class, stuff like that, done by the Kara Spring Boot service. And then you can display it there all the, uh, the, the Spring Boot application running into uh, available, not yet running, available in your uh, Caraf instance. Then you can decide to start a, a module. So you just do Spring Boot start, and then you can see that Spring Boot is starting there. Then you can see that the, the, the log are not displayed on system out or whatever. The log are using actually the Caraf log service. Thanks to what we define, I mean, we overwrite some uh, Spring Boot bean by Spring Boot Caraf bean, and it's what we do there. You can see the time, and uh, so maybe you, you may have some question, is there any overhead to start Spring Boot uh, in Caraf compared to directly doing java.jar? Uh, and actually, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty close. I mean, it's quite the same. When I did my test, uh, the start time was, I would say a, a millisecond uh, gap, it was exactly the same. So this is a first ap uh, approach where you can start your uh, Caraf and then you deploy your Spring Boot module in there. Another approach is like we do for Caramel route using the Caramel wrapper and, and tooling, we do the same for Spring Boot using a new dedicated uh, tooling that allows you to create uh, some kind of Caraf with Spring Boot running. So it means that you can directly use Cara Spring Boot package, Cara Spring Boot Docker, where you directly provide the, uh, the, the jar, uh, the, the, the Spring Boot jar. And then you can uh, decide, so this, is, this can be done using Maven, or using Gradle, or whatever. Another thing which is very interesting when you do that is to override some uh, 
class loader that you have in Spring Boot. Let me take a concrete example. You, deep, you package your Spring Boot application uh, as a Docker image, and then you have, uh, and, and your applications are using Jackson. And this is a CVE, so this is a security fix for Jackson, and then you have to update to new Jackson version. Uh, to do that, you have to rebuild your application, all your application's modules, and then repackage and deploy on Docker, uh, create a new Docker image, and do a roll-up update on, on Kubernetes, for instance. Uh, it could be painful because it means that the deployment is not a is not a big deal, but the problem is more to update any. Imagine if you have two hundred of uh, of uh, Spring Boot modules and you have to do uh, to do the update uh, on there. So in the Kara Spring Boot uh, service, what we add is the notion of stack. So the stack is a class loader that you can put just before your Spring Boot application is per Spring Boot application running in Kara where you can override some class loader. So basically, a stack is a folder containing a set of jar files. It could be Spring Boot itself, but you, we add parent first in the Spring Boot app class loader. So, and the other thing that you can do is you can define a, a whole hierarchy of uh, stacks, meaning that your Spring Boot application can use several stacks. So the big advantage is to override uh, a, this time the class loader, updating to a new version, updating to a new version of Spring Boot itself or a dependency. So this is an example of using stack. So uh, always the two approach, the first approach is using a running Caraf instance, the second approach is packaging all together. So the first approach is I can add a new stack. So this is the location of my stack where I can put my jar file. And then when I install the Spring Boot, I define the stack that I want to use. On the other hand, when I'm using the package, then I can directly provide the stack that I want to use in my, uh, for my application. This can be done in two ways. You can, again, you can package uh, your Caraf instance, so mixing Spring Boot, OAGI, and others into a dynamic approach. So this time, uh, I'm building a regular Docker image containing Caraf, and then I do some Spring Boot manipulation. Or I can use another thing, which is one grower. So one grower is a new uh, Caraf subproject. The purpose of one, one grower is to be able to run any OAGI like prime model without OAGI L and dependency. Uh, we have a question before. So one grower use a single class loader. So you don't have to use bundle. Uh, when you use one, one grower, you just deploy and run, so you can do uh, create a Uber jar, but it's to, it supports shell, it supports SCR, it supports anything that you have in Caraf. So you can actually is an alternative to Spring Boot. If you don't want to use Spring Boot, you can directly use one grower, or you can package Spring Boot CDI or whatever in a single one grower application. And finally, you can deploy this on Kubernetes, for instance, for the uh, for this screenshot, I'm using uh, EKS, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You can use any kind of uh, Kubernetes. And so once you have Docker, you can simply uh, create your, uh, your deployment on Kubernetes. Uh, I'm quickly switched to the other uh, presentation that was planned for the first hour. So let me share again. Mm. Well done. Here we are. So uh, let me give a, a, a complete overview about the Caraf ecosystem. Uh, so right now in the Caraf ecosystem, we have basically five sub-projects. So the runtime itself is the one that we are talking now is the, the multi-purpose runtime uh, supporting several prime models. One grower, as I mentioned, is an OIGI prime model with flat class loader and single class loader. Caraf Decanter is uh, all about, uh, is a kind of framework for data collection, monitoring, and BAM. Uh, Cave is, Caraf Cave is an artifact and Docker image repository manager. And Sela was cluster, but the new version of Sela is more cloud focused uh, in terms of feature. So uh, for the one who's following uh, the activity on, uh, on Caraf, 
maybe you saw that we we had a, a new pull request today about using um, secret file using uh, discovery so uh, on seller you can already do Kubernetes discovery using the pod but now we will have config map in seller stuff like that so it's more let's say it's more cloud uh, focused feature in terms of uh, carob runtime releases uh, we have a new major milestone coming is a carob 430 so all that i mentioned before the spring boot uh, module uh, can be deployed on uh, any uh, Cara version, but it will be embedded in the master, so it will be embedded in the 4.3x version. I'm not sure I will in, uh, include in, in uh, 4.3.0. The major changes in the Cara 4.3.0 release is internally use OSGI R, R7 uh, specification. It's fully JDK 11 plus plus, so it's run on JDK 14 or, or 15. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, you have an even lighter runtime. There are some dependency that has been removed. For instance, uh, Jaxby was a required dependency in previous car version. Now, it, now it, it has been removed to be uh, lighter and, and faster to start. Uh, and we also have a uh, coming feature. In the other end, we still have a 4 to 10 release coming. Uh, it contains fixes and improvements. There are no deep change or API changes there, but uh, it still maintains and updating to the uh, latest version of uh, the dependencies. So in terms of coming feature, another coming feature is coming is uh, Carap DevX. So Carap DevX is all about tooling for developer to simplify the way of using Carob, generally speaking. Actually, it provides uh, three big components. The first thing is an SDK. So the SDK it provides some annotation to simplify the way of creating a Carob application or even uh, embed an Carob in your code. So basically, what we plan to do is to have something like Carob.main and you just start Carob behind the hood. You don't have to use a tarot ball or whatever. It just starts Caraf as it is. Uh, there's also a, 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 an extension, JUnit 5 extension, which is based uh, a bit like Pax Exam, but is actually improved and, and lighter. Uh, Pax Exam is not only Caraf, it's OAGI uh, and, and different framework. So J, in DevX, we plan to do something more Caraf focused and, uh, and using JUnit 5. Uh, another thing which is, I know, pretty expected is the way of creating kind of distribution and Docker image. Uh, we already have some tooling, but they are not so easy to use. Could be very confusing depending on the scope. It's really focused on, on Maven. So what we plan to do in DevX is really to have a tuning uh, easier to use uh, to create distribution, uh, more straightforward. And all is based on Bean, and we facade this Bean using a command line, using Maven, or using Gradle. So it opens the, the usage of Caraf to uh, new people. Spring Boot, I already talked about that. So that's another uh, important uh, feature we are announcing. Uh, and the purpose is really to have, again, a unique runtime where you can deploy any kind of application modules. So that's really uh, changing, again, the, the future of Caraf. We are not a no AGI runtime anymore. We are more than that. We are monolith uh, runtime, and it's it's all about that. Uh, another thing that we introduce is a feature spec. So uh, again, to simplify the use for you as a developer uh, about the, some specification, uh, I, Java activation, uh, Jaxby, or whatever, we're gonna provide some approved feature in Cara. So it means that you can be able to do feature install spec, JAXB, for instance, and out of the box, you're going to have your JAXB feature running. It's a, it's a bit like the enterprise feature repo we have, but it's more generic and low level for uh, JDK specification. The purpose is really to remove the uh, JDK 9 folder we have in the lib folder of Cara. So to simplify the way of using uh, these specifications. So uh, again, a very light runtime. Uh, the purpose is to have a faster uh, startup, reduce memory footprint, 
Uh, one grower is really, really good for that. We, we can leverage CDS or whatever. Uh, but even the Carab runtime by itself, we were talking about one grower, can be improved and it's what we are, uh, we are planning right now. So one grower, I already talked about that, uh, is a OIGI prime model with a single flat class loader. Uh, it's already on the Git box so you, and GitHub, so you can already take a look on Caraf dash one grower. Uh, a first release is coming. Uh, we need just to polish the example uh, and documentation, but uh, most of the, uh, of the feature are, are still running. Some news about Caraf decanter. So there are new appenders coming, uh, SNMP, HDFS, S3, and others. There are some improvement on the existing collectors and appenders like Prometheus. Uh, we can obviously use decanter in the Carab runtime, but also in one world. Uh, and better integration with all the Carab sub project and Apache projects. I'm thinking about um, better leverage, Sela, because Sela will facade the JCloads and, and, and Kubernetes API, so we can leverage this in decanter or, or project like Apache Skywalking. So that's something that uh, we plan. There are new processors coming in, in Decanter as well. Uh, about Caraf Cave, uh, for the one who tested Car Car Cave for two, is a complete refactoring of Cave. And now we have a full uh, artifact, Maven artifact repository manager. We also have a deployer that allows you to manage a farm or a Caraf farm. And we have a feature gateway. So we have another feature coming is a Docker image registry that you can use uh, on-prem or on cloud. It doesn't really matter. And we have two uh, updates is a more pluggable storage backend. Right now, you use a file system, a local file system. And the purpose is to be able to leverage HTFS or S3. And the same for the metadata storage. Uh, right now, it's based on the file system as well, but we, we support ETCD, Zookeeper, Azulka, stuff like that. About Sela, so Sela is, a, we have a, a complete refactoring uh, going. Um, it, we, we keep Azelcast as a module, but uh, today Sela is really focused on Azelcast. Uh, so Azelcast will be will still be supported, but, uh, but as a module. And we have new independent and atomic module coming, focusing on Kubernetes and JClouds, and also cloud feature, generally speaking. And we also plan to have a pluggable transport and discovery backend. So instead of only leveraging Azelcast, Kubernetes, we can uh, have more pluggable discovery, like uh, Ignite or whatever. Another uh, update about um, potential new sub-projects coming in, in Caraf. So um, there's a discussion uh, on Apache Service Mix community to move Service Mix into the attic. But there are some part of service mix easily used by other projects. I'm thinking about Carmel. I'm thinking about uh, Caraf itself. Uh, so the purpose is to, uh, if we, w when we're going to move service mix uh, into the attic, uh, the purpose is also to have the, the existing bundles uh, as part of Caraf. But instead of doing bundle per bundle as we did before, it's more to, it's more to, to store some description of a bundle and be able to create the bundle on the fly. Um, so that's, that's uh, actually easier. No need to release uh, as we do bef uh, now. So it's, uh, it w we, we will introduce a new tooling to do that on the fly. Uh, the spec feature is the same. Uh, Service Mix provides some, some spec. Uh, what we plan to do is to better and focus on Geronimo, on Apache Geronimo. And so spec will be uh, probably moved as part of Caraf or as part of Geronimo. That's, uh, that's all that I have. It, it was pretty fast because I have to uh, group two uh, talks in, in one. So what I can propose to you now, guys, is if you have any question, um, we, we can uh, share. So I didn't take a look about the, uh, the, the, the chat, uh, but if, if you want to uh, to ask your question, uh, please do it on 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 the chat and uh, and ask, and I will uh, I will try to answer. No question. So there is a question from Thomas 
about uh, is uh, OSGR existing SC or SCR code can run in one grower? Uh, and the, 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 question, the, the answer is yes. So basically, uh, if you take a look on the one grower examples, you will see that we actually have SCR. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you in a few seconds. Uh, so this is, you can see there, there is uh, some uh, examples. So this is a pure uh, do uh, regularly. So this is a bundle activator, whatever. And so yeah, you can, uh, you can walk out of the box and you can, uh, you can see there the shell can walk. And actually, if you take a look, so in Spring Boot, there's the notion of starter. Uh, in one grow, we name it uh, cepage, which is basically the same. So you can provide uh, a cepage, provide all the dependencies, a kind of bomb, uh, a bomb where you have all the dependencies you need to, uh, to just create your application. So uh, this is an example of, uh, for instance, I don't know if you want to take a look on, uh, not check cells white, but maybe more check cells. This one. So you can see there that uh, I'm using blueprints in this example, but uh, and it will work in one grow in one grow. Uh, this question is there with 2D to develop car based application Eclipse with debug and not code. Um, ah, well, several questions. So there's a question from Carlo about uh, which version of Kara supports Spring Boot. Um, actually, when the Spring Boot module is still in development, it's not yet uh, publicly available, uh, it is a POC. And it should be, it, it will run in any uh, car version. So you will be able to install the, the feature in any uh, car version and run there. Any timeline on availability from Dimitri? Pretty soon. <laughs> Pretty soon. Uh, actually, I can I can already show you. Um, hold on. I can already uh, already show you what what is done. Um, let me share my screen again. So this is a Spring Boot module. Um, so you can see that it's already available. So uh, you can see the, the command there to install the Spring Boot application. And you can see uh, internally, so this is the Spring Boot service imp. It's where you can register. So you can see there that uh, we're looking for stack. We're creating metadata. Uh, it's where we're creating the class loader for the launcher. So we have a dedicated launcher uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, Spring Boot. So if I show you the, the launcher quickly, it's there. So you can see that we are using reflection uh, to find the main method defined in the uh, Spring Boot jar file. It's where we, we can see that we overwrite some bin internally. Uh, it's done there. You We also have some uh, uh, so some Agma and a, a big class, which is actually generated using ACM, is the class generator. It's basically where we can override. You can see there that, for instance, by default, Spring Boot is using our Spring Boot, fr Spring Framework Boot Logging, SLF4J Logging System. And what we do is we hack, we override this bin by our bin, which is a packs logging base. And thanks to that, I can override some, uh, some bin. So that's the way it works. So back on your question, Dimitri, when it will be available? Pretty soon, really pretty soon. Yes, Guillaume. So basically any Spring Boot application, again, is a pure Spring Boot application. 
so any any starter, any dependency that you use in Spring Boot, including Spring Data, you will be able to use in Kara, using uh, thanks to the Spring Boot service. You're welcome. Any other question with the list? Ah. Uh, to be honest, Thomas, probably. The reason is PAX exam is really, um, I mean, uh, I did a new re uh, release, uh, but anytime we add new feature is, uh, I mean, it's painful. You need a, a cleanup. Uh, and again, the pro Pax exam is a great tool, uh, but it's not only Cara focus. Uh, so probably David will be the JUnit file extension. will use part of Pax exam, but for your the user facing API, it will use its own API. Uh, Richard asks, will David support such a thing? Uh, let me read the... Oh, uh, you talk about the Eclipse, right, uh, Richard, I think? Let me read. Okay, so you want to do some kind of uh, live coding uh, in Eclipse. Uh, that's not the purpose of DevX. Uh, I think it's more an Eclipse-related uh, stuff. In the past, we have a new thought, which is named um, uh, Eclipse, Int uh, Eclipse Integration for Cara, EKF. But um, unfortunately, we, we, we didn't support this anymore. Uh, so for this, Richard, I'm not sure we're going to, uh, in the short term, have anything to uh, matching what you need. Um, if there are some Eclipse developer or, or, or people that want to help, that would be great. But uh, one grower. Ah, what's the motivation? Um, there are two motivations. Uh, the first motivation is to provide an alternative, and especially for the one who knows uh, OSGI. They can, uh, I, I mean, today OSGI prime model is pretty big and, uh, and it's a good one. But the main drawback is all the hell about dependency extra. Most of the time, the hell about, uh, about dependencies because people doesn't know how OSGI is working. I mean, uh, uh, my video is off. I don't think so, for sure. Should be on. Anyway, uh, back, back on Carl's uh, question. Um, the motivation is pro, uh, for one grower is the program. The prime model is fine, but the dependency it can be hell, as people say. <laughs> uh, so that's, and in my opinion, OSGI again is uh, internally to um, is an internal purpose i mean the fact that carrot is based on OSGA doesn't really matter um, but as a facing the prime model is fine and but but again the class loader can be an issue so the purpose of one is to leverage all the feature all the prime model you have in OSGI, but without any bundle or whatever you just have a single class loader so it's really an alternative to Spring Boot, but with a different prime model. So it's more to migrate people from OSGI to something else. Uh, if you already know Spring Boot, just deploy Spring Boot in, in Cara. I mean, that's, that's easier. Uh, it doesn't uh, so the question is, how does OneWare compare to OSGI Connect? Uh, OneWare doesn't uh, use the OSGI Connect specification. Is a uh, completely, uh, uh, I would say, coming from our ideas. <laughs> so, so, no specification. Uh, the, the purpose, 
there are some drawbacks about OSGI Connect in the way that OSGI Connect still uses an OSGI framework behind the hood, and, and so you still have the same uh, you still have the same issue uh, than uh, than in in, in OSGI. So the purpose of one one word is really a single class order. Uh, we asked several questions about the timeline. So about Spring Boot, the timeline is um, I would say a month for two. So uh, probably end of October, November, we're gonna have uh, some um, uh, uh, first preview of, of Spring Boot. I, I mean by by preview an MVP. About DevEx, uh, I would say end of this year. Uh, so I would say December, yeah, for around Christmas, something like that. One slide as uh, some OSGI native No, by OSGI native, I mean that directly using the OSGI specification way, uh, meaning a bundle, uh, bundle activator, extra. Uh, there is an effort to implement OSGI in C, C++. The name was Celtics, but it was, uh, I don't think it's maintained anymore. So by OSGI native, no, nothing about C or C++. It was really about, uh, um, uh, about the, the way of creating the bundles and, and the activator. All right, I think. So anyway, uh, you have uh, back on, on, on the slides. Um, just to, to, to summarize, so uh, you have a kind of website, uh, the main list. We also have a, uh, the Caraf uh, channel on Slack, the ASF Slack. Uh, you can uh, send an email. Uh, if you want to ping me directly, uh, it's pretty easy to find my email somewhere. So you can you can ping me or on Slack. But yeah, that's uh, I wanted to, uh, to to provide you a, an highlight about the new direction taken by Caraf. So it's more than yeah. Thanks, Thomas. That, that's his settings. Um, it's the, the, keep in mind that OSGI is not the, the main purpose of CARAF for the, uh, so the, the purpose of CARAF is to be the first model runtime uh, that you can use uh, with any kind of artifacts. All right. If we don't have any question, I'm gonna stop this session and uh, see you on the next one. Thanks guys, see you soon.